Hello. The Esoteric Healing Focus Group has been working this year on physical, emotional, and mental health. Beginning with the physical, we focused on how nutrition and diet, water, rest, physical exercise, and sleep affects our overall health. For emotional health, we focused on things that trigger negative emotional reactions and how to minimize and eliminate these reactions in order to restore health. Included in this was an exercise to change our mechanical ways of reacting. With mental body health, the themes we worked with were concentration, thought, and meditation. So I'll be speaking about the physical body. Making sure that we are nourishing our bodies with the best food, water, and exercise is essential to good health. A weak body is an instrument in which germs and bacteria can grow and multiply. A healthy physical body will naturally provide a pure instrument for the astral and mental bodies to use in service for the plan. Nutrition and diet. In the teachings of Agni Yoga, we read that a vegetarian diet is most helpful and even recommended. Vegetables, fruit, milk, and cereals are always beneficial. From the book Heart, we read, refinement of the heart predicates the eschewal of a meat diet. Truly, it is difficult to decide where lies the greatest harm from the assimilation of meat or from the attraction by meat of undesirable guests. Of course, no decay is permissible. Even vegetables must not be permitted to decompose. From New Era Community, we read, true, the life process of plants resembles that of animals, but one can see that the decomposition of plants begins much later. Vegetables are better used either fresh or dried in great heat. From Letters of Helena Rourke, we read, Vegetarian food is advised, not just for sentimental reasons, but, but mainly because of its greatest benefit for health. And furthermore, it is mentioned that some fish even feel less pain than plants. As for the fear of introducing animal magnetism into one's organism, one may answer with the words of Buddha. If high achievement could be attained only by abstaining from meat, the elephant and cow would have attained it long ago. <laughs> so the group members worked first with balancing our diet with the following. Fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts and seeds, fresh butter, natural cheese, and herbal teas. Most of this group do practice a vegetarian diet and eat all of the above mentioned, but there are a few who do need a little fish or fowl at times. One group member has been learning about mushrooms that grow in her area and learning about their medicinal and nutritional properties. Chanterelles have vitamin B12, which is needed for vegetarians. And also we can um, increase our vitamin D levels by putting mushrooms out in the sun before cooking them. I never knew that. <laughs> One of the grains that some of the members have been working with is einkorn. It is an ancient grain that has not been hybridized. It's highly nutritious, containing protein, fiber, and rich sources of vitamin B, antioxidants and minerals. The flour and bread have a yellow hue due to the antioxidants found in it, and it has a nutty flavor. It is more easily digested and may possibly be tolerated by those who have wheat sensitivities. 
another member who has been sensitive to gluten made bread with buckwheat and millet flour, which was much easier for her body to tolerate. Of course, butter and jam made it more palatable. <laughs> another member has been eating goat cheese, which has been easier to digest than cow's milk. Rest. From Leaves of Moria's Garden. Work itself cannot be tiring when it is properly distributed. You just need to understand how to properly switch the group of working nerves and then no fatigue can take hold. Do not try to find rest in idleness for it is nothing more than the microbe of fatigue. Your muscles may ache after being tensed but it is when you sink into idleness that you really feel the pain. So rest can consist of retreats, spiritual seminars, tuning in with nature and the devas, and feeling harmony within our bodies and then harmony with all of life. The teaching is a great place to rest and increase our psychic energy. We have many books, lectures, YouTube videos to turn to whenever we are in need to boost our energy. One member reported that when her workload became too stressed, she picks up a book of the teaching to read. And this switch in labor helps to achieve feelings of harmony. Another member found that the annual WMEA conference provided a rejuvenation to her whole mechanism. water and herbal teas. From New Air Community, not only do people not pay attention to the emanations of the earth, they do not take into account the quality of water used. For their protection, people have devised the use of boiled water, forgetting that certain water organisms cannot live in boiled water. True, many microbes perish in the boiling, but on the other hand, upon cooling, boiled water actually absorbs a great quantity of dead particles from the atmosphere. So if you, if you wish to reduce brain receptivity, drink cold water boiled, which has been kept for a long time. It communicates to the organism a sluggish staleness. We teach the use of boiled water only in its fresh, hot state. We make use of springs, admitting for purification, alum or pumice. Tufa, which is found around geysers, is also useful as a purifier of water. Pure water not only quenches thirst, but also ozonizes the whole atmosphere. So it is best to drink pure water, herbal teas, juices, and milk, especially unprocessed milk. Also drinking water is a good way to purify many organs in our body. From Agni Yoga, we read, all alcohol is barred except for curative purposes. And curative purposes would be when you use alcohol and tinctures. We used to be able to drink water from our kitchen tap, but we are no longer able to do that in many places. So adding a water filter or buying spring water is the best thing to do to have clean water. One of our members goes to a spring and collects fresh water. So if you live near a spring, that is the best water. In fact, one of our WMEA members went to Sedona and got water for, from the spring for us during our conference this year. It's delicious. <laughs> Another member found that not drinking enough water fatigued her. The skin was, has less elasticity. Veins become more pronounced. Muscles become more achy. It can also upset your digestion if a person does not get enough water. One member has been drinking chai made without black tea. Instead, it is made with marshmallow leaf, licorice root, and chai spices. 
marshmallow leaf forms a protective layer on the skin and the lining of the digestive tract also contains chemicals that might decrease a cough. And licorice root has potent anti-inflammatory, antibacterial and antiviral effects. It may also relieve symptoms of indigestion like acid reflux and heartburn. Another of our group members drinks pine needle tea. From letters of Helena Rourke, we read, the emanations of pine trees are of course irreplaceable. Pine trees like electric machines accumulate vital forces, a condensed supply of prana. The Druids considered a chalice of pine essence as the chalice of life. Pine needle tea was used to to cure scurvy because it is high in vitamin C and A. It has been used medicinally for thousands of years, but do not use yew trees, spelled Y-E-W trees, cypress or ponderosa pines as they have toxic properties in relation to tea making. One of our members harvested some young Douglas fir needles and has been adding it to her morning tea which she says gives her more energy and a nice boost to her immune system. Pine needle tea has been used for detoxing, improving circulation, relieving nervous fatigue, sore muscles. It's anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. Physical exercise. Exercise is healthful to your physical, emotional, and mental well-being especially exercise in nature. Walking under the trees, in the mountains, on beaches, by rivers and creeks is where the, the vital fresh air is to be found. One person walks five times a week in the forest under the trees in the mountains. There is a real difference in the air quality when walking in the forest as opposed to walking in the city. Another person said exercise helps increase her stamina and energy. Living in Prescott, we are so blessed to have wonderful places to hike amongst the ponderosa pines. It's energizing to breathe the scent of these beautiful trees and it's very beneficial for our respiratory system. Another member chose to walk paths that were more on the incline and rocky. This helped to open the lungs and strengthen different muscle groups. Sleep. From letters of Helena Rourke, we read, sleep is beneficial and absolutely necessary for the nourishment of our subtle bodies. Only during sleep can we easily nourish it intense, intensively with the finest energies to say nothing about the great lessons we receive while in this state. In another quote, she says, it is most foolish to think that one can develop and increase the supply of psychic energy by too much work and too little sleep. It is not a decrease in food, but a lack of sleep that injures the organism. She further states, Sleep is absolutely necessary because during sleep, our subtle body is nourished by the vital substance of the subtle world, which has contact with higher energies. If deprived, this nourishment of spirit droops in the polluted atmosphere of cities, it is necessary to sleep not less than seven or eight hours. One member says that she had tried sleeping for five or six hours because she lives at a higher altitude, but her body like seven or eight hours for her, for an order for her mind to be clear. Another member says that when she has trouble sleeping, she takes valerian tincture and hot water to relax her body so that she can more easily get to sleep. From super mundane, we read, sleep is a great gift of the gods and opens the entrance into the super mundane. <clears throat> Insomnia was always regarded as a punishment because it deprived man of a natural communion. 
now Valerie will talk to us about the emotional and mental bodies. So I'm going to share our work and experiences this past year and striving to bring greater health to our emotional and mental bodies. It's important that we do not neglect our bodies in the pursuit of our spiritual studies. We may be scholars, we may be experts in our field, but if we don't pay attention to the health of our bodies, our bodies will remind us that they're being neglected. And with the Agni Yoga teachings, we bring in so much fire. So it's important that we really pay attention to our physical, emotional, and mental health. We know that our physical, emotional, and mental bodies are interrelated with one another. So what happens on one with one body affects all the other bodies. We try to identify the negative emotions and what triggered them. Also how to work with certain virtues and instructions from the teachings to help us transform our negative emotions. For instance, if someone is negatively polarized, they will be full of fear, anger, depression, self-pity, and resentments. From New Era Community, we read, depression is the enemy of each improvement. There can be no constructive building in doubt. There will be no learning under fear. Observation is a step toward justice. So observing these negative emotions in our nature is the first step to conquering them. If we cannot see them, then they will control us. They'll control our relationships in life. So what does fear do to the emotional body? It makes us attached to the object of our fear. It paralyzes us and it can even crack us. There are so many fears that keep us stuck and crystallized. From the book, New Era Community, it states, we drive out all fear. We throw to the wind all the many colored feathers of fear. The blue feathers of frozen terror. The green feathers of trembling betrayal. The yellow feathers of secret crawling away. Red feathers of a frenzied heartbeat white feathers of reticence, black feathers of a fall into the abyss. It is needful to repeat about the multiformity of fear. Otherwise, there remains somewhere a small gray feather of complacent mumbling. But behind these will be the idol of fear. Each wing of fear bears one downwards. So we are challenged to look at the multiformity of fear, of all the fears that we have. So one of our members posted her experience in observing the triggers that puts her in a negative emotional state. She said, this has been a rocky month emotionally. I've allowed fears and doubts and some shocking events to slow me down. I have the tools from the teaching, but it is a matter of using them. Tools are the virtues such as courage and faith in a higher power, willpower and fearlessness. Another member posted this. Self-observation is helpful when dealing with the fear. A situation presented itself this month that is a recurring theme in my life. I have a fear of confronting others. 
when they have overstepped their boundaries. And I'm learning that it isn't honest to say yes when I mean no. I practiced fearlessness and I confronted the individual telling them what I really felt. And this resolved the issue. From super mundane, the thinker pointed out that the disciples must test their fearlessness. When the teacher observed that a disciple was afraid of something, he placed them at once face to face with their fear, with whatever frightened them. We practiced a visualization exercise in which we were expressing our highest love towards someone whom we disliked. And if we can accomplish this, then gradually the love will destroy and eliminate the negative feeling. So one person said, I've been practicing this exercise, especially with those who are coarse, insensitive, egotistical, and demanding. It is not easy. It takes practice doing this on a regular basis. Practicing this exercise has made a, po a positive difference in my relationship with this person though. Another member wrote, I'm doing this exercise to clean negative emotions toward a person in my family life that has a very challenging personality. I was having a difficult time even visualizing love towards this person. I can intellectualize why she's so difficult, but it's still hard to do the exercise. But I kept up and I continued working on expressing love toward her. And as a result, there was a sign that something had shifted and now we are able to communicate somewhat, which is better than nothing. We also worked on emotional positive polarization of our emotional body by creating harmonious, beautiful, and a calm home environment. One of our members wrote that she tries to create a harmonious home environment using color and sound and essential oils, classical music, and especially working on right human relations with other people in her household. Studying for classes and lectures meditation course materials increases aspiration, which is like emotional food for the emotional body. From another person, my emotional body does seem more sensitive as I age. Harsh experiences such as difficult relationships can affect my nervous system for days. But practicing calmness and compassion analyzing the situation from different viewpoints, spiritual indifference and visualization has helped to overcome negative emotions. From the book, Super Mundane, we read that Earth's body knows that the more complicated the circumstances are, the more calmness is needed. Do not take this as moralizing. It is medical advice. One cannot imagine to what degree complex currents can damage the organism. And this is why developing a state of calmness is beneficial. So one member wrote, this month, my emotions have been more harmonious and calmer. And I've been using a beautiful mantra, which goes, may the light of the Holy Spirit fill my soul and radiate out through my thoughts, through my words, through my actions, so that I walk and live in light. May the divine light never leave me, but charge me day after day, so that I live in this world as a daughter of light. Another member wrote, we live in a time of emotional challenges and shocks. Some days it is hard to carry it all. On these days, I try to keep active and productive. I take time to rest, go into nature, 
try to keep my balance. From Super Mundane, we read, it will be asked whether calmness there can be, what calmness there can be when the world is in convulsion. But it is precisely when the world is in extreme tension that calmness is needed. At such times, problems are not solved by the usual methods. And from Leaves of Moria's Garden, he said, if you are afraid, give me your fear. If you are in doubt, give me your doubt. If you are angry, give me your anger. The mental body. We also worked on mental health. It is interesting that when one embarks on the path of meditation and concentration, they find that in their later years or in times of tumult, they are able to keep their direction and their focus and not wander aimlessly. They never lose their true north. So we worked on concentration, thought and meditation. From Leaves of Letters of Helena Rourke, she, she says, you ask whether you should continue your meditations. Everything that develops the concentration of thought is most useful. One person says, I've been striving to observe my thoughts and reactions, especially when they are not in alignment with the transpersonal self or my conscience. And there are justifications, excuses, that my mind automatically falls into. So I've been trying to catch myself and take greater responsibility for what I have created. This kind of reminds me of Anna Kama's talk yesterday about catching those, those bad thoughts, those ugly thoughts. One person says, I strive to do daily meditation. Sometimes I start off saying that I will do meditation, but then gets distracted by daily problems. I'm working on changing this. And I know that meditation is the greatest treasure and a way to expand my consciousness. Another person said, observation is so important in learning about our motives. I've seen how identified and fixated I can sometimes become with just the little things in life. My concentration level is not as good as it used to be when I was younger. And I'm striving to keep my mind focused and concentrated. From Letters of Helena Work, she says, it is very useful to watch the quality of thought and not allow any malicious, petty, and in general mean-spirited thoughts. The purifying of consciousness is the first step. So I'd like to end with the quote, um, that, we, that we heard today from Wendy, from Nicholas Rourke, from um, the Helena Rourke notebooks that the Agni Yoga group is working on, the Agni Yoga Focus Group. And um, the master is saying, I wish to endow Rourke's paintings with a gift of healing diseases, except for the drawings of costumes and scenery. Carefully pack the paintings drawn today. Do not reveal the miracle except in my circle. The presence of the paintings is like disinfection. In case of a dangerous disease, immerse your eyes intently and for a long time in the painting. Thank you. <laughs>